All right, these guys are ready to roll. Will, make sure you mute the stream. Don't be listening in. Let's see how this one turns out. No pressure here. Will Bobsled representing Australia versus Canada. Playing for your country now. No pressure. Okay, this I think is already good for white, isn't it? Since uh, black doesn't have a pawn maintained in the center. So this is reminding me of uh, a Grunfeld, but without having the knight on c3, black doesn't have a capture in reply to e4. So white could grab space, grab the center, have a, have a nice center, and uh, the knight has to retreat. There would be no time to recapture. What else is there? Okay, e4 it is. Black needs to strike at this center in some way. d5 is the most uh, principled way to do that. Using the c-pawn, and there is also ideas of using the e-pawn. Black will try to employ a, a dark square strategy, which is to say put pressure on d4 by way of the natural bishop g7, as well as taking out the knight, which is a defender of the dark squares. And right now what's already threatened is bishop takes knight, and if white wants to not double the pawns, they would lose the pawn on d4. So bishop takes knight, pawn would have to recapture. Bishop e3 to defend, black could yet again insist on putting pressure on the d4 point, as well as knight c6. I was talking about c5, but there could also just be peace play pressure against d4. So we'll see. Bishop e2 is an idea. Okay, bishop check to... In oh, I, this is interesting. Bishop to b5. Bishop b5 to induce c6. Okay, this is disrupting... This is being disruptive with uh, black setup, right? Knight c6. Hmm. There is no knight c6 at this point. If c6, the bishop drops back to e7. I was thinking e7, bishop e2 right away, but I like inserting this check. I think this is an inconvenience to black. All right, and also, okay, the queen is being masked. Now, now throwing a question, there is no time to take on d4. Well, bishop g2 attacks, bishop e3 defends, I'm liking white. I think come all the way back to e2 is best. Not to play to d3. You want your rook to eventually play to d1 and be able to advance d5 with more support. So I think this is a, a bit awkward to have the bishop on d3 opposed to e2. I like d2 better. What to do about this pawn? Bishop e3. Bishop e3. If the knight moves and the queen and bishop are then hitting the pawn, what do you do? For example, bishop e3, knight to f6. Hmm. Two minutes, 35 seconds. About a minute and a half advantage for black. Wow. Not too far off rating wise between these guys. Bishop e3, what else? I guess e5. e5 gives up this square, but white has control over it. Bishop e3, if knight f6, e5. That might be another way. Okay, white wants to defend d4 with e5, and that tells me that maybe the bishop wants to go to a different square. I like castles right away, and white is. Um, speeding up here with those last that last move at least rook d1 the bishop if if white could get rid of the dark square bishops and then get a knight to the f6 square i think that would be great dark square uh, eliminate this dark square bishop and then get to this these squares d6 and f6 maybe just right away knight e4 to d6 is already right around the corner Um, yeah. Knight e4. 
Knight d6 is very annoying. Bishop g5 is available. Bishop g5, I think black would be forced into playing f6. I don't think you could allow white to control f6. If bishop g5 and queen c7, for example, the knight jumps right in there. It's tricky. There is also the h-pawn that could be used to contribute to an attack against the king. If, if he gets all the way to h6, you'll note the bishop would be trapped. Black, of course, would see that, but he could become a thorn is what I'm getting at. It's defended right now. The queen has an eye on h4. b7 is hit. It's awkward to defend this pawn. You have to devote a major piece to defending a pawn. Not so great. Also, knight takes pawn here is threatened with the fork. Hmm. You know what? I think queen c7 is needed. Queen c7, and if knight takes, that's a blunder because of king g8, and that's a pin that white cannot get out of successfully. Bishop here, I think, is a threat, which would force the rook away from the defense of this pawn, and then knight takes or queen takes. So this is a serious threat. Something like h6 would not be so great. And notice how this pawn is hitting both bishop and trying to undermine the knight on d6. A minute 10 for white. We're going to have some very interesting play right away here with this tension between these pawns and the possibility for the rook to be hitting the queen. If pawn takes, there is bishop takes. Rook takes, the queen would have to play to g3 to defend the knight. Right? I don't think it's a good idea to take the knight in that case, in that instance right there. So we are having this variation. Bishop takes bishop. Oops, a rook takes bishop, hitting the queen, and you're still on the knight. Rook takes bishop, knight check, simply king g7. Oh, taking with the knight. The knight is hit, and this knight is uh, able to move with the discovery against the queen. Knight takes, queen takes would be needed. This knight better get back into play, maybe right away. Knight d5. He's not needed on b6. He needs to come back into play. Okay, this pawn is hit. And this bishop has... You know, knight on f4 is going to be very strong. Taking here, the it seems very scary. Queen takes, rook takes... A lot of mobility for the black rooks and on top of it all knight f4 is not long off there is this possibility of exchanging queens how are we with the material three versus okay six versus six with the pawns bishop takes g7 is the threat this pawn is now pinned he's unprotected rook e5 seems like a good idea rook here might be available just attacking the queen or even knight f4. Knight f4 defending g6 and hitting the bishop on d3. Or a queen trade. 30 seconds for white. Less than 30 seconds for white. Mate and X, um, I'm reminded that he, he, this player knows how to play very fast. So white is going to have to pick up the pace here if, if they're going to win. A minute advantage for black. Rook e4. Rook e1. Tough game here. Oh, rook, rook here. Rook here, rook here, maybe going after the d4 pawn. Rook, rook f4 to d4. He's backing up. Hit, hit this pawn again. Maybe black should get their king working towards the center, get the king up to f6. And then rook f1 to e1. Hmm. 53 seconds. 50 seconds. What is black thinking about? 47, 46, trading pieces. Get rid of the rook. The black, the kings need to work. Gotta get that king working. King g7 to f6 to watch over e6, which would allow the rook on e8 to do something else. Take towards the center. King to f6 or f7. I liked f6 better. Now this rook should be doing something else. Rook a8. Black should get this rook to a8. 30 seconds for black. White has certainly picked up the pace here. Rook endgame. The knight is dead, and now here we go. Time scramble mode. 14.4 for white. And uh, it looks to be a draw, but we're going to come down to a rat race here. Rook checks. 
White all of a sudden is better, being up a pawn, but down time, 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds. H5 is played 2 to 1. This pawn is racing 8.1 seconds to 16 seconds. Pawns continue to advance. The G pawn is passed, and he continues to march. Rook H6, get the king up to F6, or get it right behind, actually. F5. Oh, the king's going in a different direction. King here. Watch out for mate. <laughs> no mates just yet. Four seconds. Who is better with the mouse is the big question. 3.6 to 4.9. <laughs> White is flying. The rook is hung. Oh, go fast. 1.3. 2.3. 1.9. Oh, black wins. Barely. Whoa. Good game, guys. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Very nice game. Down to the wire. Uh, Will Bobsled versus Me and X. That was one of the better kibitzing games I've uh, seen on stream. Very interesting battle. I thought white was better for uh, a long while with uh, the space advantage, having the the pawn in the center uh, right here when there was this e5, d4, e5 structure. And when e6 was played, I immediately my eyes lit up. Actually, no, during the game they didn't. I realized a tad bit late. But d6 and f6, a knight really wants to eye those squares, and he became very annoying. Getting into that D6 square game. Alright.